Hey, Modern Mountain Man here. Welcome to the Man Cave. Um, you may be wondering why I would use that messy shelf right there as a background. Coming up on Man Stuff Monday. By the way, for some of you guys who uh, have subscribed to this channel for gun content, at the end of the video I've got something back here I want to show you. Now if you've been following along with us the last couple of weeks, we have been doing a study on a book that's called Making Men by Chuck Holton. And um, we, the basic premise of the book is, is this, um, that we need to know what it looks like to be a man in order to be men as well as raise our sons to be men. And Chuck basically took uh, the acronym of SHAPE um, and it said, this is what a man looks like, SHAPE. And so S was SUBMIT. We talked about that the first week. HONOR was what we talked about the last week. Uh, if you missed those two episodes, I encourage you to go back, check them out. I also encourage you guys to pick up the book. I, I'm only covering the five chapters that cover the acronym, but there's some other chapters involved in this as well. So go, go. there's an Amazon link down below. Go pick that book up if you'd like. Um, but today we're going to talk about the A of shape, which is actually two words. It is assess and improve. Squarely in the sights of our author this week, uh, as he is discussing the ability to assess and improve and that quality that's within a man to assess the situation and improve the situation. Squarely in his sights, the target um, is this passivity. The, the, the sin, the trait, the problem of passivity in a man's life. Um, it, it's interesting, he starts with a quote from Jesus where, uh, in Matthew 5, the one where Jesus says, if your eye offends you or your sin, hand causes you to sin, cut it off, pluck it out. And he says, you know, I, one of the things I really uh, extrapolate from Jesus' uh, statement there is sometimes extreme measures are needed. If, if I want to change something quickly, man, I need to take take action. And that, that's what we're going to be talking about today is taking action on things that we want to change, things that we want to improve. As men by nature, we're fixers, almost even to our detriment. Sometimes you're having that discussion with your wife and you're trying to fix her and she just wants to be listened to. Outside of that realm, we're fixers. <laughs> and, and, you know, it, as a man, we're always looking uh, Assessing our situation, assessing our business, assessing our family, our house, our man cave. <laughs> uh, and we're saying, all right, what needs to be improved here? What, what can I do? Uh, are things going well? Are things going poorly? Are they average? Am I meeting my goal? Now how can I improve it? On page uh, 94 of the book, he says this, A man who makes the habit of constantly acting on the impulse to make things better will never lack for profitable work. He'll never have to worry about being able to find something to do or how to provide for his family because a man who consistently improves himself and the lives of others is reflecting the glory of God, which is the highest purpose. Those men have discovered that happiness is found in leading others to it. If you live a life that you're constantly saying, all right, let me... Uh, assess myself and improve myself. Let me assess the things that are around me and improve them. In fact, let me lead others that direction and, and help them assess themselves and, and help them hold them accountable to improvements. Then, then you, you're always going to have open doors for you. That There's always going to be a, a job for you. There's always going to be something, uh, a new adventure, something exciting for you. Now, when it comes to the world of assessing and improving it needs to start with me I need, I need to start with the man in the mirror and for you it needs to start with you not me start you start with you I start with me um, but uh, you know uh, self-assessment is difficult right it's it's kind of the author refers to it's kind of like watching yourself blink in the mirror you, you missed it you can't you, you can't see it yourself and so sometimes when it comes to assessment sometimes um, you need to uh, ask others in your life to help you out with it. Um, that I was uh, a coaching session I was in on re recently. Uh, the the coach asked uh, all of us a very powerful question. He said, "If you really want to humble yourself, but also really want to grow, go ask the people in your life this question: What is it like being on the other end of me? How, how do you perceive me? What was it like doing life with me? Was it like being on the other end of me?" 
you know, when it comes to uh, self-assessment, it might be a little bit difficult. You, 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 you may trend one direction where you're your own worst critic and you think all these terrible things about yourself, or you're viewing yourself completely with some rose-colored lenses and you think you're awesome and everybody else should think you're awesome. But uh, are there some people in your life that can help you in, in that assessment and say, what, what is it like to be on the other end of me? What, what, are, what are some areas of passivity in my life do you see? In addition to... Uh, Using other people to assess you, you can even use some other um, types of um, digital things to help you in self improvement. You know, if if you are, feel as though you're you're wasting a lot of time online, there are, are websites that you can you know link your browser to that will show you exactly how much time you spend doing various things. You can log how much time you spend sleeping, eating, watching TV, all that kind of stuff. And it'll help give you a bit of a, an assessment on your life. There's no profit in deceiving yourself. You're, you're not going to gain something by tricking your own self. So one of the things that for us as human males that we don't like, we don't like admitting our weaknesses. But if we're going to grow, if we're not going to continue to deceive ourselves, we need to become a pro at admitting our own weakness. And the really cool thing about being strong enough and brave enough to be able to admit your own weakness is this. Once I say it out loud, a lot of the power of that weakness is broken. All, all of a sudden, um, I'm not living this facade anymore. I've admitted I'm not good at this or I've got a weakness in that area. But there's something about that extending myself in humility where grace can come in, either grace from God, grace from the people around me, grace from my, my friends and coworkers. When I can admit I'm not good at this, all right, well, we're not going to make you struggle through that anymore. We'll, we'll, we'll give you the support you need, uh, or we'll take this off your plate and we'll delegate that to somebody who that is their strength. But being able to admit where your weakness is. So once again, one of the things that's squarely in our sights today is passivity. If we're talking about uh, how we're going to assess and improve, passivity is going to block any assessment. Passivity is going to uh, block any improvement. Let's just passively allow things to go on as they are. So when we discuss passivity, it's more than just laziness. It's more than just uh, um, not doing things. It's, it's really a lack of passion and a lack of care to do things. In fact, I, I could be passive and be active in the wrong thing. I, I could fill my time and abilities with all these other things so that I can actively be passive in the thing that I should be doing. Page 97, our author says this, the root of passivity goes back to the gateway of manhood, submission. When a guy fails to submit to any part of his life to the purpose for which he was created, he is being passive. He is failing to live up to his calling as a man, and that is passivity. So basically a definition there of passivity is if, if this is who I'm supposed to be, and this is what I'm supposed to do, and this is how I'm wired, how I'm geared, how I'm gifted, what I'm called to be, if I am not submitted to my calling and my purpose, and, I, and I'm, I could be completely active in this other area, but if that is stopping me from walking in submission to what I was wired and created to do, that is me being passive. Now, another way to define passivity um, other than what it is, we can also defi define it by what it's not. What, what, what is this antonym? The opposite of passivity could be defined as passion. If you are passionate about your calling, if you're passionate about how you're wired and geared and the thing that you've been set on this earth to do, that passion will give you energy to go after and accomplish that thing. You'll, you'll set other things aside, say, this is nice, this is great, that's for somebody else, this is for somebody else, but for me, I have to be locked in and focused in accomplishing these things so that the very thing that I'm a passionate about will come about. And that passion creates power within you. This goes back to submission creating power. Because I have submitted my life to my calling, my purpose, my destiny, the way I was wired and geared. Now, because of that that submission, I, I can be focused enough to be powerful to accomplish things that I wouldn't be able to under passivity. Therefore, passivity is the opposite of passion and power. When it comes to this war on passivity, we, we can be our own worst enemy, right? You know, this the message all around us 
is a message of passivity. Men, just relax. You, you, you've earned it. You deserve it. Enjoy yourself. Satisfy yourself. Take it easy. Relax a little bit. Avoid risky behavior. And then on top of that, we're bombarded with all sorts of activities that would actually keep us from accomplishing the things we're passionate about, the things that we're called to do. And as if our culture around us didn't make not being passive hard enough, there's a part of passivity that wells up from within us from our forefather, Adam. I was reading the story of the Garden of Eden the other day, and I got to the point in chapter 3 of Genesis where God pronounced the curse of sin. And when he got to Adam, he actually rebuked Adam for being passive when his wife tempted him with the forbidden fruit. One of the key indicators that you and I are moving in passivity is the blame game. Um, I, I catch myself in this all the time when I start blaming other people or blaming circumstances. Um, and, and for me, this is one of the areas that I'm having to assess and improve, right? And... and when I get into blame, I blame my circumstances. I blame this person. I blame the family. Blame coronavirus. Whatever you want to blame. When I get into a place of the blame game, you've moved into passivity. On page 103, this is what our author says about dealing with the blame game. The truth is the only thing a man can change about the problem is the part he controls. If he learns to look for points of passivity in his own life when confronting a problem and then takes drastic action to get rid of them, often that's all that's necessary to bring change to those around him. So we, we can give in to the blame game and we can say, well, I blame this, I blame that, I blame her, I blame him. But at the end of the day, all I can control is me. He uses this phrase that I, I'm sure that I will use later. He says this, whether you dug the ditch or simply fell into it, the next step is the same. Climb out of the hole. You can blame this, that, and the other, but at the end of the day, all I can control is me. And as a man, I need to stop blaming this, I need to stop blaming that, and say, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just handle my business and do my part. In fact, the Apostle James says this, he who knows what is right and fails to do it sins. So we, we've learned to assess now we, we we need to not just assess but improve. Uh, I had a friend of mine when I when I took over a responsibility that I was really really excited about and I was casting all kinds of vision about it. He says, "All oh, that's great, but at the end of the day, talk is cheap. You can say all this stuff that you want to do to improve this new responsibility of yours, but what are you going to do?" And and over time, people will see whether you're just talking or whether you're doing. See, if you assess the situation, but you never improve, the situation never improves, your life never improves, the people around you never improve, we have to assess the situation and then make actions to improve it. And we need to be able to make improvements when things aren't going well, when things aren't, because yeah, anybody can make improvements when it's easy. Anybody can make improvements when the improvements are fun. But what about when improvements are costly? What about when improvements are dangerous? What about when improvements may offend other people? Can you improve things then? Another great character from the book of Genesis is a guy named Joseph. Joseph, uh, he early on in his life, he kind of got a little full of himself, bragged to his brothers about his destiny and his dreams that he was having, and his brothers got mad and actually sold him into slavery. <laughs> Pretty bad brothers, right? Well, he ends up in this guy's house named Potiphar, and he says, you know what? I'm just going to improve my situation. I'm going to assess Potiphar's house and I'm going to improve the situation. And by the end of his time in Potiphar's house, he was in charge of everything in the house. Well, he ends up having a, a false rape charge lobbed at him. He goes to jail. He says, you know what? While I'm here in jail, I'm going to improve my situation. And for two years, he sat in jail and, and, and improved his situation to the point that the jailer put him over all the rest of the inmates. After the, the pharaoh of Egypt actually pulls him out of jail to come serve him, um, he says, you know what, I'm going to sit here and improve pharaoh's situation. And, and to the point that he ended up becoming second in command of all of Egypt. Now, he could have made excuses. Oh, I could have been this great guy, but my brothers lied on me. Now I'm just working for Potiphar. Oh, I, I could have been this great servant for Potiphar, but now I'm in jail. But instead of just making excuses, he says, you know what, I'm going to assess my situation, and I'm going to improve it. I could complain, I could make excuses, I could blame other people, but I am going to assess my situation and improve it. We can live in passivity, we can live in a place of 
a lack of improvement if we want to, and we'll never grow into the men that we were designed to be. But the truth about who we are and who we're called to be was actually outlined in our creation when God said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness, and let him have dominion. We, we were created to be the bearers of the image of God, and we were created to rule and reign. We, we were created to, to, to say, the sphere of influence that I've been given, I will assess and improve and make things look more like his paradise, make things look more like what he created them to look like. We look more and more like the image that we were created in when we're loving the people around us, we're protecting the people that are in us, we're improving the people around us, we're leading and blessing them. It is in those times that we are acting like, living like, being the men that we were created to be. And a boy picks up the mantle of manhood when he does these things. Doesn't matter what age he is. When I, when I say, you know, I am going to walk in my created intent and improve and assess everything around me, then I'm walking like a man. So here's some homework for you men. I, I want you to do some passivity hunting. You know, I've got, if you guys follow my channel or know me personally, you know, i got chickens and ducks out here. And every so often, I'll have a certain type of predator that gets after my chickens or ducks, and I have to eliminate them any means possible. And when it's a skunk versus a fox versus a raccoon versus a hawk, I have to do that in different means. And so I have to go hunt those things down and get them out of there or, or provide protections against them. Today, I want you to do some passivity hunting. I've got, there's six areas listed here that I, I want you to say, what, how am I being passive in this area? How am I lacking passion and power in this area to, that I'm not walking in my original intent for this area of my life? Get out a, a pencil and a paper and write these six things down. Spiritually, family, physically, mental slash academic, financially, and career. Write those things down, you know, um, block them out however your, your mind thinks in terms of how you can brainstorm and work on that. Maybe, maybe work on one every day this week. Between now and next Man Stuff Monday, say today I'm gonna focus on how am I being passive spiritually. Tomorrow I'll, I'll think about how am I being passive in my family, and so on and so forth. W work your way through them, but go passivity hunting. If you need to phone a friend, phone a friend. Ask somebody, hey, do you see how I'm being passive in this situation? W work on those things and bring it back next week. Now, I mentioned to you earlier in the video, why would I uh, do my video with this messy background right here? I'm assessing this is a mess, and I'm about to improve it. I mentioned to you, I had a few things to show you. Let me grab some real quick. I know a lot of you have subscribed to this channel for the gun content, and the Man Stuff Monday is the bonus. So if you're still here watching, I want to throw a few, a few things at you. You know, this year is 2020, and it's been an interesting year. Um, you know, and I know uh, there's a lot of talk, uh, you know, for 2020 leading into it. It's like, oh, this is a year of vision, 2020 vision. And so I was like, you know what? If it's 2020 vision, Man Stuff Monday will be a visionary, but also when it comes to the, the gun content on this channel, I wanted to review some optics. I want to show you a few things that I, I'm going to be reviewing pretty soon here. One, um, I've got this uh, primary arms um, reticle, uh, it's, it's the KISS reticle on here. Uh, I, I used it during hunting season, uh, really, really enjoyed it. Uh, but I want to introduce you guys to it. The um, primary arms has a lot of cool stuff with their ACS reticles. Um, but this is KISS, it's the keep, keep it simple, stupid uh, thought process here. Um, but it is um, basically the ACS, but less busy. On the Fitz Beowulf, I've got this little uh, bitty red dot on here right now. This is this a little Amazon Chinesium red dot that I'm going to beat the fool out of this one. Um, that's why it's on the 50 Beowulf, because 50 Beowulf can put an optic uh, to, the, to the test. And so I'm looking forward to fiddling with this one. Um, I'm going to shoot it uh, with a lot of 50 Beowulf rounds. Uh, you know, while it's riding on top, I'm not going to shoot it with the 50 Beowulf because I know that would destroy it. But I'm, gonna, <laughs> I'm going to shoot some 50 Beowulf with it, see whether I can lose zero. Then um, if it survives just normal use on the Beowulf, I may take it off and mount it to something else and drop it off the roof a few times. But um, 
we're gonna we're gonna put some some serious uh, tests on this one. But the one I really want to show you guys is what I've got right here on my five five six today. Um, so this is some space age stuff right here. I got this stuff from Meprolite recently. Um, this one is a um, 3x magnifier. Pretty cool deal. Um, just push button, slides back and forth. Really like the way it works. Got got the quick detach on it right here. But the red dot right here in front of it, it's not a red dot, it's a green dot. Um, now, this one right here is the Meprolite Foresight. And can I tell you, this is space age. It's literally shooting with this is like you're playing a video game. It, it's crazy. Um, I'll go into the details later, but I can tell you this. Um, it's got two different apps on my cell phone that I can work my site with. Um, it's nuts. And so one of my goals right now is to run a 5K gun run. And this is the optic I'm going to be using for it. God bless you, and go take your mountain.